Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with lesson number four in our incredible new tutorial series where you are going to learn artificial intelligence on the Jetson Nano. What I'm going to need you to do, you know the drill, get yourself a nice big mug of iced coffee and get ready to learn how to operate your Jetson Nano in the headless mode. So what I will need you to do is get out your hardware and get it set up. What? You don't have your hardware yet? Look in the description down below. I have links to all of the cool hardware that we have and it is kind of helpful if we are working on identical hardware. However, I have a feeling that if you've made it to lesson four, you're probably that guy that already has your hardware, right? Okay. Also want to give a quick shout out to my friends who are supporting me on Patreon. Uh, you guys that are supporting me on Patreon are allowing me to continue to get better studio equipment. Hopefully you're enjoying the much improved audio from this microphone made possible by my Patreon supporters. Uh, next up, what I really want to do is hopefully if you guys will keep helping me, uh, this webcam that I'm using here, it's a pretty nice webcam, but it's just for these live shots what happens is it loses its focus and then I got to come around and start fighting with it to try to get the autofocus back and it's really a distraction it's kind of like a very big distraction as I'm trying to make the videos and the thing keeps losing the focus and so that's kind of the next piece of equipment so thanks to you guys who are helping me out enough of this nonsense and useless promotion of myself and and, and that sort of stuff and let's just get right into the lesson where again what we are going to learn to do is we are going to learn to operate the Nano headless. Now, what does that mean? <clears throat> well, headless means that you don't have wires coming into the Nano. It's sort of operating in an autonomous mode. And actually, this isn't too bad right now the way I have it. I have the power cord coming in. I have the HDMI cable coming out. And then I have this little dongle that allows me to use a wireless, my, uh, a wireless mouse and a wireless keyboard. And so I don't have the horrible octopus of rat's nest of cables coming out that you could have but we can do even better if we go to the headless mode so in order to go headless what that means is is that we're not going to be connected to a monitor and we're not going to be connected to the keyboard what we're going to do is we are going to remotely log in from our desktop computer and on our desktop computer, we're going to have a window pop open that's the terminal window for the Nano. And all the things that we've done in the last two lessons, the Linux commands and the Python and stuff like that, we can do from the terminal window, but that terminal window is operating on our PC. Does that make sense? <clears throat> Hopefully it does. So what do we need to do? In order to do this, you do need to access the desktop the first time. So we are going to go over to our Jetson Nano desktop and we are going to right mouse click and we are going to open a terminal and what we have to do is we have to figure out what is our IP address. So we're going to type ifconfig. Okay. Now, if you are doing a wired Ethernet connection, you will probably see your uh, your IP address up here under something like ETH0, one of the first ones that should show you an IP address. But I am not on a wired Ethernet connection. I am on a Wi-Fi connection. So I look down here under WLAN0, and I can see that my IP address is... 10.1.37.35. Your IP address is going to be something different. Okay, your IP address is going to be something different, but look at it there and jot that down because you are going to need that later. So now we have our IP address. And so what we are going to do is we are going to come over and I am going to unplug my little keyboard and mouse dongle. And I'm going to put it back in its little receptacle in the bottom of the mouse. Am I the only one that's ever bought some kind of cool little gadget like the wireless keyboard and mouse and then lost the dongle? I can't tell you what a huge box of cool gadgets that I have that are missing the dongle. So I'm trying to be more diligent in not, uh, not uh, 
losing those things, okay? Now we are going to come over and we are going to unplug the HDMI cable. So you can see at this point we have lost focus again. Okay, there we go. And the only thing that we have, the only cable that we have coming into the Nano is the power cable. Let me see. See the little power jack. Now, in uh, if we wanted to go even more portable, we could get a suitable battery and we could try to run the thing from a battery and we could have it being completely remote. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring power in from the wall warp. Now what we need to do is we need to switch over to our PC, our desktop PC that we want to run this thing from. And so I will come over here and then what we will do is we will go to Google and we will, uh, we will, uh, let's see, what will we do? We will look for the program Putty. So we will search on download Putty. P-U-T-T-Y, download PuTTY. <coughs> and then what you can see is you see PuTTY, P-U-T-T-Y. It says go to download. So we click there. And then you find the appropriate download for you. I am on a Windows machine. Okay. And I am on a 64-bit machine. And this looks like it gives you some package files up here. But I'm going to come down and I want the putty.exe file and I want it for a 64-bit machine. And so I can just click right there and it will download. Then once it downloads, you just click on it to open it. And I already have it downloaded. I already have it downloaded. And so you can see that I have this little icon down here. Can you see the little icon? right there. I don't, I'm not sure if you were seeing my cursor. Okay, but I will open it. Yeah, you can see my cursor. I will open PuTTY. Okay. <clears throat> PuTTY is opened on my Windows desktop machine. All right, now you could probably use it just as it is, but for you guys to see me using it, what I need to do is I need to make the font bigger. So I am going to come down to Windows in Appearance and I'm going to say change the font and I'm going to give you a big, hefty, rugged, manly sized font of let's say 26. And I'm going to make it bold and then when that terminal comes up <clears throat> you should be able to see it at home pretty well. Okay, so now I'm going to come back up here under sessions. Okay, I'll go slow. You see sessions. I'm going to click on Sessions, and now I'm going to put my IP address in. You should put your IP address in. You should not put my IP address in. If you did the first step of this video, you should know what it is. For me, I'm using 10.1.37.35, and I will uh, also make sure that I have SSH selected. So I'm going to SSH into 10.1.37.35 and then the default port is 22 and that seems to work fine. Now I'm going to click open. Ah, look at that big beautiful bold window. Now the first time you do it you probably are going to get an error message or a warning saying are you sure you want to do this? We don't know who's really trying to log in and all that sort of stuff and so you really want to be very careful and make sure that you are practicing good network security and if you're not sure what that means talk to your network administrator just make sure that you're not generating some sort of uh, vulnerability but for me things are locked down and so I just clicked OK and then it pops in to log in. It's your, it is now your Jetson Nano username. Remember for me it was PJM but you set your username up for whatever you set it up as. And now I want your password. Okay, so I will put in my password. Okay, always it's kind of funny like I see these guys like I just kind of have this crazy mind. So I see these guys and they are coding and you know they're sitting there typing, 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 coding and then they're coming in and they're typing <clears throat> and you see you hear them coding and you see them typing you see what they're typing on the keyboard and then they type in their password. Well I, I bet with a little artificial intelligence that probably every key has a pretty unique sound signature, audible sound signature that is coming out and so it kind of seems like if you were really clever that you could listen to them typing their password and then you could 
feed it through a little artificial intelligence and you could probably have it translate that into what type what password they type so you notice I type my password in really quietly just to make sure that there's not one of you guys out there trying to hack my Jetson Nano. Okay, so I click enter and boom! Look at that. We are logged on to the Jetson Nano and we are running headlessly. You see, I'm connecting to it through the Wi-Fi, through the Wi-Fi, and the only wire that I have going to the Nano is simply the uh, power cord. Okay. So I come back over here and I can do something like ls. I can cd into my scratch folder. And you guys need to see this a little better. You're getting a little cut off on your view. OK. <coughs> that looks pretty good. So then I can do an ls. OK. I could write a Python program. Let's do nano. And let's call it remote. Remote pi.py and then I could say msg is and we're now nanoing we're editing a text file which is going to be a Python program message is equal to remote operation successful okay and then I can do a print and then since I'm using Python 3 I use the parentheses and then I'm going to print my message. Okay. How do I save it? Control O lets me save. Enter saves it. Control X lets me out. LS. There is remote pi. And so then I'm going to say Python. I want to make sure I'm forcing it to use Python 3. So I will say Python 3. And I will say remote pi.py. And there we have it. Boom! remote operational operation successful so where we are now we have a, a terminal we have a terminal from the Jetson Nano that is displaying on our Windows desktop machine and we can go in and do all the things that we did in the last two lessons all of the Linux commands that we did all the simple little Python programs that we did all of that sort of stuff you can now do with nothing connected to your Jetson Nano except for uh, except for power. Okay, where would this be useful? Well, maybe you want the Nano doing something like running a weather station or making measurements or doing something where you can't be sitting there. Well, it doesn't matter because you can putty in or you can SSH in and you can do all the things that you would want to do from this terminal that is on your uh, desktop PC. Now, a couple of things this your PC has to be on the same network as the Nano because this is like a private IP address you couldn't have it at work and then go home and log in from home because this is not a pub public IP address but as long as you're on the same network you can log in and do whatever you want okay one other thing that is really important we went in and we got the IP address using the IF config now if I left and turned the Nano off and came back later there's a very good chance that the wireless router would give me a different IP address next time around so what you need to do is after you get that IP address you need to log on to your router and you need to reserve that IP address for your Nano so that every time your Nano will have the same IP address. If you're not at home with your own router, if you're at work or some sort of educational institution where there's a network, you need to go to your network administrator and ask him or her to reserve the IP address for you so that your Nano will always have the same IP address and you'll always be able to remote in. I will warn you, they will probably yell at you. They will probably scream at you. They will probably throw things at you. But if you just remain calm and just keep asking, they will probably eventually reserve the IP address for you. And then you'll always have the same one. And you won't have to go in and reestablish what your IP address is every, every time that you want to use it. So you do need to reserve that IP address. I cannot give you a step-by-step -step process if you're at home because there's a million different routers that are configured a million different 
different ways. What I can tell you is you need to reserve the IP address and just, uh, you know, look at the documentation on your router. And the keyword that you're looking at is dedicated IP address or reserved IP address. And it will show you how to reserve that IP address for your particular piece of hardware. Okay, guys, this has been a pretty simple lesson, a pretty quick lesson, but we have gotten you to the point that you can remotely log in. So where are we? You should have your gear. It should be booted up. You should be comfortable using the Linux terminal, and you should also be kind of comfortable in working your way around from the command line. You can now log in remotely. And next up, I think the things that we have coming down the line, I think probably in the next lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to start getting a little bit more familiar with uh, Python because uh, the artificial intelligence that we're going to be doing, I'm going to be doing in Python. And so for you to not just be copying what I'm doing, you've got to kind of understand Python. And probably the next couple of lessons, I'll be getting you up to speed on Python. I'm assuming you probably got here from like Arduino. And so you understand if statements and for loops and while loops and, and variables and things like that. And so I'm going to assume you already sort of understand that, but I'm just going to be showing you the syntax for Python. And so we'll spend a couple of lessons getting comfortable with Python. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use a Python library called OpenCV. And when we start using <clears throat> OpenCV, that's when we'll really start getting into the artificial intelligence. And so we will, our path into artificial intelligence will be, you know, starting, got familiar with Linux, then get familiar with Python, then get familiar with OpenCV, and then we'll start writing our own programs in OpenCV. But I'm going to be taking you through it in a way that you'll actually understand what you're doing. So after you watch my videos, you can get a good idea and you can run out and you can be doing artificial engine, artificial intelligence on your own. Yes. Okay. If you guys like this video, think about giving me a th thumbs up. Think about subscribing to the channel. If you subscribe, make sure to ring the bell and you will get notifications for my new uploads and my new live streams. Also, <clears throat> think about sharing this with other people. Man, I want to get more people working on this. Continue to try to build a little bit of a community here on this channel. Really like it when you guys start conversing amongst yourself down in the comments. I read all the comments. I try to respond to the comments where I can, but you guys start interacting with each other. Let's try to get a little bit of a community going here. Put your ideas down below. Talk to each other about your ideas. And then I do hope that I can continue to have like once a week a live stream, a live chat, a live stream where we can kind of have the live chat going and, and talk about the project and talk about how things are going. Okay. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, Paul McCorder from toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.